Glenohumeral osteoarthritis is a disabling condition that impacts quality of life, sleep, pain and function. It primarily affects overhead movements and movements requiring external rotation. Let's see what we can do about it. Check out our online courses now. The link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. Mishner et al. published the first clinical practice guideline for the management of glenohumeral OA by physical therapists. These 2023 guidelines discuss pre- and post-operative strategies for clinicians. Shoulder OA is the loss of cartilage in the shoulder joint. This condition causes changes in the underlying bone and the growth of osteophytes. Subsequently, the shoulder's motion and functionality are impacted by these modifications. The collagen in the joint doesn't change with age, but it does grow more permeable and less moisturized. This causes the collagen structure to degrade, the water content to rise, and the protein and proteoglycan content to break down. Population studies show us that glenohumeral OA occurs in about 20% of people over the age of 65. Risk factors include being female, a previous shoulder injury, occupation that requires heavy lifting, overhead sports, genetics, obesity, etc. Treatments for shoulder OA include medication, injections, thermotherapy, exercise, massage, bracing, and surgery. This is not to say that these modalities are effective. Other joint replacement surgeries, it is known that preoperative health status and strength are associated with better post-op outcomes. However, no such data exists for the shoulder. Total joint replacement becomes an option when symptoms and loss of function progress. Rotator cuff tendon tears, severe fractures and rheumatoid disease can also lead to a replacement. Let's diagnose the condition first. According to the evidence-based intervention program by the NHS, one can classify someone as having glenohumeral OA when symptoms persist for more than three months, there is no instability or pain at the AC joint with a manual exam, and there is a global reduction in range of motion with the greatest loss in neutral external rotation. Patients often have trouble falling asleep and wake up in the middle of the night due to pain, although this is not a criterion. Here's a list of differentials to keep in mind. Additionally, the age and a radiograph can aid in your diagnosis. On the radiograph, the critical shoulder angle can be predictive of glenohumeral OA. An MRI can be beneficial as well. Let's say your patient gets operated on and receives a total anatomic or reverse shoulder prosthetic. When should you start? Well, it depends on the patient. Early active assisted exercises, meaning earlier than four weeks post-op, result in earlier range of motion gains, which makes sense. However, there might be a small risk of damaging the subscapularis muscle. Some surgeons will remove the lesser tuberosity due to a variety of reasons, and this is the subscapularis insertion. The subscap is often sutured back onto the humerus with the tuberosity removed. This means that the subscap might be vulnerable in the early stages of rehab. Early active assisted range of motion exercises might put too much strain on the subscap and are associated with delayed lesser tuberosity healing and therefore an external rotation limit of 30 degrees is often warranted. Be advised that patients that had their lesser tuberosity removed or have an impaired subscapularis experience higher levels of pain instability, and a decreased active internal rotation. Oftentimes, rehab is delayed until four weeks, with the exception of passive joint mobilization exercises at the discretion of the surgeon. According to the guidelines, this delay poses no harm. The guidelines recommend the use of a sling postoperatively. You might want to consider a sling in neutral as one high quality trial showed less night pain at two weeks compared with internal rotation slings. In terms of prognostic factors, those with depression or anxiety pre-operatively experience fewer improvements post-operatively regarding pain and function. Another thing that is known and worth mentioning is that about 10% of patients fall and land in the emergency department after their shoulder joint replacement. This is something to look out for. On to some best practice statements. 
Since the research around the shoulder arthroplasty and physical therapy is so limited, the authors formulated some statements that they consider best practice. Note that these are thus not based on high quality evidence, but on theory, patient values and preferences, and other evidence sources. The first one is about preoperative rehab. The authors suggest that this may benefit the patient postoperatively. At the moment of publication of this CBG, there are no studies on preoperative rehab for shoulder arthroplasty. However, looking at studies for the hip and the knee, benefits are certainly possible. The second statement goes over the potential benefits of non-operative modalities for patients with glenohumeral OA that do not want to undergo surgery. One study reported improvements with NSAIDs, hyaluronic acid injections, education, range of motion, and muscle strengthening exercises. So, physical therapy modalities may help patients with glenohumeral OA. In terms of postoperative physical therapy, weirdly enough, there is no moderate or high quality evidence. The desperately needed studies have not yet been performed. However, the guideline committee recommends postoperative rehab for functional outcomes. For edema management, the same conclusion was reached. No moderate or high quality evidence, but it could be helpful according to the group. Judge this based on the best available evidence, clinical expertise, and patient values. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something today. If you want to learn more about shoulder OA, check out our stiff shoulder course by Andrew Cuff and Thomas Mitchell. Make sure to give the package discount a look to get the shoulder, elbow, wrist, and hand all in one purchase. The links are in the video description. I am Max for Physio Tutors, and I will see you in another video.